his mic. Oh wait, but nothing happened. You probably hit your button. And you probably hit your button. I as sure did. I said that. But when you're ready, you can oh, do the uh, intro. Mine's oh, going. Uh, it, mine's, going. mine's going. Mine's going. Hey everyone, back to welcome back to with Fast B &B. Charging I with B and B. I'm Brian, I am there. as you know. Wow, nice static. He totally just like, went into a deep oh. hole on that one. Awesome. That sounded nice. awesome. Yeah. All right, yeah. So All right, so we got a whole bunch of news today of everything that you could possibly imagine. We're going to cover every single topic that happened what in the last two weeks. Everything. So this is going to be the speed version of it, but not really. So... You got anybody on besides uh, JJ? I do. I've got Daniel and MD and uh, Andrew Jameson and uh, Char Chelsea, Hockey Day, and who is this, of course, MPAT. Got some good folks in here. A lot of the usuals. All right. Well, that's the great. The unusual usuals. And Digital Blade Canada just showed up. Hello, everybody. And hello, JJ. And hello, JJ and whoever else is lurking on my channel and hasn't said anything in, in the comments because I got nine... Nine people sitting there with a mere two likes. Oh, I have uh, this guy, Brian, from my Tesla weekend. He I didn't want JJ also. to be lonely on Welcome, channel. Brian. Welcome to the, the show. On the other channel. Because we simulcast <laughs> live on two channels for no good reason. Why don't we talk about some stuff? Let's do that. Let's, let's get to the stuff. I've got my stuff up already. I got the wrong stuff up. But Domino's Pizza. This is crazy stuff. They're going to have 800 electric vehicles for delivery drivers. And they look like they're all going to be bolts. And I'm going to tell you something that you may not know. Um, I used to work at Domino's Pizza. I probably did like three to four years. Everything from driver up to uh, store manager. And these cars are perfect for delivering pizzas because they're small. They're compact. They don't have great range and they don't need great range because I can tell you but I used to do about 100 to 125 miles a day delivering pizza. So I think uh, this is uh, pretty good for uh, for Domino's and for GM. And by the way, the reason I put pizza in quotes on my title is because I can't eat this stuff anymore. It's a good choice because they're economical to operate. They're low maintenance. And with the abuse they're going to face, if this pilot program doesn't work out while they're still under warranty, turn them in. Yeah, so I definitely think this is a, a good move for both Domino's and uh, it's good for GM because it gets these cars out. And, you know, eventually you're going to see like almost every kind of delivery vehicle that is uh, short range like this uh, buying these short range cars. And, th and these cars aren't even that, that short range. Um, but the EUV, they've got the EUV, the yeah, EUV, which is the higher range of the two, but the one that's not the EUV, I think it's just the EV, the right. Bolt EV, uh, will be will be cheaper, won't have as much range, and it's not needed. As long as they have a place to plug these cars in at night, because that is going to be something that they will need. That's true. Now, I didn't know Domino's even operated very many of their own vehicles. They don't. That's the thing. Um... A lot of them are franchise owned. Uh, when I was doing it, it was franchise owned. I also wor worked at some corporate stores um, in another state. But uh, at some point, Domino's corporate started buying back the franchise. You no, I was it? adjusting my mic. I've got a little echo <laughs> over here. I'm trying to address it. Yeah. And a little static coming through in my ear. So clear your throat because I think you swallowed a static bug. Uh, yeah, so... I don't know how many of their cars um, they operate for the purpose of delivering pizza. I, I would, because when I did it, I was always driving my own vehicles. But I suppose the corporate stores will have them because they had the um, uh, the car. They had what was it? A Chevy Spark that they used to do. I don't know. Do I remember, remember they had one at one point, and it was, uh, and it's saying I'm now very staticky. Mm -hmm. Am I static on your end? Other, other, when you when you touch that, whatever you're touching there okay. makes you but static. I'm not touching anything now. Am I still so, static? Yeah, yeah, you sure are. Do you know who uh, Sam Crack is on no, YouTube? No, I do not. Am I still static? 
that was not Sadiki. He he bought one of the Domino's cars a oh, couple I years ago uh, from an auction. Yeah, and then he rebuilt it, and then Domino's sent him a cease and desist. So then he bought another car, and he had to go through there and remove all the Domino's logos off of it. Um, but I, I think it was the the videos that made him very popular. He's got over a million subscribers now, uh, just rebuilding different weird cars, and the Domino's Spark car was one of them. You still trying to address your static? What is Brian doing? I think he's decorating. Holy crap, that was not good. That was horrible. Oh, you've got... I think you're on a different mic now. Oh, I might be. Now, now, it, went away. now, now it went away. I think maybe your mic was rebooting and the other one took over for a minute. Mm. Say something, interesting. Say something interesting. interesting? Sound good. Okay. Sound good. Very strange. All right. Yeah, we're going to have to fire wow. the production crew, the guys who work behind the yeah. scenes. Hmm. Gee, you had all that time to prepare for this, and that's what happened? It says now okay. We shall see. We shall see. <laughs> so that's enough about Domino's, I think. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. But, you know, who, forget better except, pizza. Except you know who pizza makes sucks. a better performance model of, the, of their car? Mercedes. You better be ready to yeah. pay for it. That is horrible. That is horrible. Locking performance behind a twelve dollar subscription. A hundred bucks a month $12? extra. Uh, that's ridiculous. And, and it is. And, uh, it is. And uh, you know, I know the Model Y has uh, a package that you can buy uh, for a performance package when you buy the long range. It's two thousand dollars. Um, but then you get to keep it. It's not like something you have to pay for monthly. Uh, and it will increase your 0 to 60 about a half a second, give or take, which is nice. Um, I just am not a fan of any type of subscriptions. Uh, it should be part of the car or not part right. of the car. And if you're buying it after the fact, then it's part of the car. It stays part of the car. and doesn't expire at the end of the month. So that is just an... Another thing to be disappointed about on the uh, Mercedes cars, and the other thing is the price, the range, and the price. Which is patently ridiculous. And it is yeah. it is a big horsepower jump, but it's only getting you up to a level I would consider finally competitive. 288 in a modern 4-matic, not, not competitive. 349, barely barely competitive especially in that price range yeah that price range taking you from uh zero to 60 from six to 5.1 um that's the the hyundai ionic 5 zero to 60 is wow. 5.1 with the dual motor for for a comparison and the price um, difference is the eqs double double uh the the eqs on there, you can get down to four and a half and four point nine. Okay, now we're in Model Y range. I don't remember exactly where the Model Y is, but it's in the mid fours. So, uh, and if you get the, you buy the two thousand dollar upgrade package, you are in the low fours. So, not not impressive at all to make people pay for that. No. We've done things on subscriptions before where they're even going to have subscriptions for seat heaters and things like that, which is obnoxious because it's part of the car. It's just not activated. I think they've been playing too much video games where you can buy a different skin. But uh, and, uh, <laughs> speaking of cost cutting. Uh, yes, I guess you're ready to I move on. I am ready to move on. <laughs> I am still apparently Our. having echo issues. I'm not sure why. I am working to do it. I've got you turned down to the point where I can just barely hear you. You shouldn't be bleeding through my mic too much. And turn it a little, I guess, away from the speakers. Turn the speakers away from it. There we go. Maybe. Jim Farley said, yeah, it's going to take 40% less labor to build because they're simpler. Did you know that? They are much simpler. Yes, I did know that. 
Uh, and they could probably get it down even lower if they went to like maybe a casting, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, you would think that they would have known this by now. Everyone's been telling them this for <laughs> ten years, I would say. And it's, I mean, guys. That is that is really surprising that this would come out uh, because we've all known that they're easy to build. Just the whole idea, if you've ever watched an internal combustion engine being built uh, from just how it's cast um, with all the little holes in the galleys and the ports that are inside an ice engine for oil, for coolant, and things like that. Very, It's a very precise thing. It has to be nailed down. And it, uh, they really can't be automated. I, I don't think there's any um, automation... There, there is in the casting of like the block, but putting them together, they're mostly hand built, aren't well, they? Well, and a lot of steps go into it because you've got to cast the block, you've got to machine the block, and you can, like you said, you can automate parts of it, but packing the bearings in and all that, uh, getting you know everything, and like you said, the tolerance is very tight on those because at three thousand RPMs, how many explosions are in each cylinder per minute? Yeah, they're... Uh, 3,000? That... <laughs> um, or is it one-fourth or one-sixth? At be... any rate, hundreds, if not thousands of explosions per cylinder per minute. Control, controlled explosions. Internal combustion. It, it yeah. is what it is. Um, so I, I, don't, I just don't know why, why it's such a surprise. Especially, okay, uh, right on the surface, you don't have... A transmission. And, and tr <laughs> you, ever, you ever had a you transmission fail? You ever look inside a transmission? Have I? Yeah, me too. Yeah. Probably three or four. I, I, I've got a car in the shop right now that's getting a new transmission. Wow. Right this moment. And that's a pretty new one, I'm guessing. It's a car with about 44,000 miles on it. It is an eight-year-old car, but it's low miles. Um, but it's getting a brand new transmission put in. Wow. So John points out that explosions are half the RPM in four-stroke normal cars. So when you're revving it to 6,000 RPMs, you've got 3,000 explosions per minute. That is, that is quite a lot, though you don't, you're typically not running a car at 6,000 RPM for a long period of time. But even if it's 2,000, that's still a lot of explosions. Right, So. right. Yeah, internal combustion engines are definitely more complicated. Uh, the electric motors, while still being complicated, can be built uh, with automation uh, to get the tolerances exactly the same. Wild. And I've never had a, an EV motor blow up because you didn't change the oil. <laughs> <clears throat> How's GM doing? I heard they're going to be profitable on EVs. That's exciting. That. That's what they say, but I don't know how they're going to become profitable if they can only produce a few hundred. And, and when did they say? Is it going to be in like six months or something? Twenty twenty-five, years ahead of schedule. <laughs> so we're still so far out in the future that it's anyone's guess. It could be twenty never, but it could also. I mean, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Mary Barra, quite the leadership, and it matters. But um, that means. That no matter how many they uh, produce, they're going to lose their money on every one sold. So what does that mean in terms of ramping volume? Well, it, well, obviously they've got to uh, ramp up so that they can get the margins down. And But they just think that they're going to be able to do it sooner. I think part of the 2025 number is counting on price drops that are not available in 2023. So volume wouldn't help. It would just exacerbate the losses. Hmm. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe they're realizing what uh, Jim Farley just realized and that the labor is going to be a lot cheaper. The other thing we were I was going to say, and I got reminded about it uh, by John here, is on the Bolt, that's probably a fleet deal where they're getting a fleet price because of all the EVs on the market, those are the only ones I see sitting on lots. That is true. That is true. 
and I've mentioned that in the past couple of weeks that I do see the bolts sitting there. But I also have said that I've seen different bolts every time I'm there. It's so they are turning over. They are cycling, just not correct. as fast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's because they're not as attractive as as anything. anything. They are the Pretty least. Much. I don't yeah. mind them, but it wouldn't fit my use case, and I can't see a fan club emerging about them. Yeah, it, but there's got to be a couple of fanboys yeah. for them. But I'm they they don't make my cut just because how slow they charge. Did want to say real quick. That's howdy to Tech Fixer. Um, let's talk after the show. I've got a couple questions for you. Having been to uh, the Peterson Museum and seen some of Tesla's fine, fine prototypes, including uh, the Roadster was there. The uh, original Roadster was there. The original Roadster prototype was there. The T0 was there. And uh, the Semi was there. It's very cool. That is very cool. That is very cool. So you you know what's not Mm. cool? Plagiarizing. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that was a staticky laugh oh you got me what's this yeah. about what what are you talking about so uh gm speaking of them this is how they're going to save money by just using other people's ads and uh, photoshopping their vehicle on top of a rivian and saying look what we made supposedly this was for internal use only that's what they say. That's how they backpedaled on this. But they literally but they went to the effort of flipping the image. Of, and if you look under the, the Denali, you can still see that part of the front down low there on it. Oh, yeah. Lazy. Sloppy. Yeah. You couldn't... I mean, you've got but your you can own see render. All the, all the leaves. You can't render your background. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that, that's really embarrassing. Yeah, as but Lars I, from Best in Tesla would say, that's Mary embarrassing. <laughs> nice. I see what you and him d- well, did there. I will tell you, on my recent drive, I saw quite a few Rivians heading the other direction on the highway. They're easy to spot because their headlights are so distinctive. But I probably saw oh, five or extre- ten over the course of 2,000, 3,000 miles. Yeah, and you can, uh, even at night, they're very distinctive when they're pulling up to you. It's almost like Jeep headlights, uh, where you can, you pulling up behind you, you go, oh, that's a Jeep. Now you can go, oh, no, that's a Rivian. Yeah. And everything else is kind of like, um, you know, unless they have a shape in their LED yeah. design. Very nondescript mo- otherwise. Cars tend- so that's a smart yeah. design cue. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, good news for Mazda. They're... Is that how you say that? I've always <laughs> It's wondered. one of those words you always see written but never hear out loud. Mazda raises yeah. EV sales target uh, to 40% by 2030 with an $11 billion transition acceleration fund. Oof. Wow, okay. That's pr- a pretty low target compared to some. It is, that. but it's desperately needed. And I love that they gave us a render of a car they'll never make. <laughs> Why Masa, not? Straight well, out of the Hot, hot Wheels I catalog. was interviewing all kinds of people in Florida, and I kept asking who is going to be the first domino to fall, and a lot of people said Mazda because they don't, uh, they, until apparently today, did not have an EV transition strategy. And, you know, the MX-30 with a 100 miles of range, if you're lucky, is a joke. Um, yeah. And I did see one at a charger. I was like, oh, really? Mm. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> I saw the Honda Electric that had a 100-mile range. That's what I saw. It was... Mm, oh. Mm. But $11 billion, this is what it costs to transition a percentage of your fleet to electric. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's Mazda's going to be first uh, to go or... I'm wondering if it's going to be uh, Chrysler or one of those. Um, they have a lot of uh, electrification going on with their European divisions. So that could save them. And is that still Chrysler? Well, it's still Stellantis. Or is it? 
Well, Stellantis owns Chrysler and Dodge, right. Ram, and Jeep. Right. So Jeep uh, is going heavier into the... um, plug-in hybrids, and I had a chance to ride in one at the LA Auto Show in an, in a demonstration that was mind-blowing because it was running on pure electric because uh, they, there was a limit to how many uh, uh, fume spewers they could run inside the place. So they would run the Jeeps mm-hmm. on all electric until until they got too low, and then they'd plug them in. But it would do the performance on this thing. Oh. You know, imagine the torque. It, it just climbed up a, a very shockingly steep wall and then regen down the other side. And it was pretty, pretty amazing. And because it's a Jeep, they also went up a flight of stairs and down a flight of stairs. <clears throat> but it was... Uh, well, why not? So their their strategy, their plug-in strategy, will get them um, to do pretty well. Um, it it might help them survive because the incentives do not sufficiently differentiate between plug-ins and battery. But the but the other well, Stellantis brands, Fiat and whatnot, all have electric models. They re re unveiled the 300e. Who cares? So. Yeah, well, you you do realize that Chrysler only has, I think, three models left, two or three of models. Pure electric. There's the Pacifica oh, and the 300. Oh, in total. What up? Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. They, it's like they don't make cars anymore. Yeah. yeah. And the minivans do yeah, well. It's, it's pretty, pretty crazy, especially considering how big they used to be. I mean, even mm-hmm. there, even yeah. even when they were making straight trash for cars. They were pretty big, which is always. What what's, what's straight trash? You you could not be talking about the Aries car. Oh, I didn't even think of that. I was thinking the Plymouth Laser. The Plymouth Laser was a copy of the Mitsubishi Eclipse and the um, other one, uh, Eagle Talon. A bad copy. Th- those are straight a bad copies. Copy. Oh, I had one. I had an Eagle Talon. And later on, I bought a Mitsubishi Eclipse, but Plymouth no longer existed at that time. Dodge Neon was uh, had a decent reputation. I had a friend who had a Dodge Stratus. It was only like two years old, and my God, was it falling apart. Mm-hmm. I had a friend who had one of those. Hmm. Do you it, know um, it was VW and Mercedes are running into trouble? So it turns out the new CEO over at uh, Volkswagen, now that Herbert Diess is on the outs, has said, you know the Trinity plants where we're going to build all our EVs? We might need to push it out by three years. And why is that? Uh, I don't know. I mean, they're, software, they're having software problems, which we'll get to quite a bit later, but they're, they're just going slower. I don't know why. It seems that they also cut the price of the EQS in China by thirty-three thousand dollars. Wow, that is that a, because they they misjudged the market. <laughs> that is an eye-watering price cut. So, looking at uh, German EV sales, Tesla's at the top. BYD is in number two. They're coming. GM in third. VW. That can't be right. Oh, no, this is the global share. Global share. Ah, never mind. Because, yeah, obviously, VW would be at the at or near the top in Germany, I would hope. Yeah. And I wonder if these are still EVs or plug-ins as well. Because a lot of numbers I see saying, oh, BYD is going gangbusters. They're uh, including plug-in hybrids plug in. in those figures, which is not the same. Not the same. Not the same. It's a yeah. half measure. Yeah. And Mercedes is sitting there in 16th place. 16th place. And, mm. and you know what? The best way to get yourself up like a couple notches is start putting subscriptions <laughs> into the car. That's the, that's the best yeah. way. Faraday Futures is, you imagine is the, apparently the, a thing. Not a thing. Faraday Future warning it may not be able to deliver. It's luxury EV. Huh. Yeah, so maybe it's not a thing, 
But that actually kind of has the look of the Celestique, doesn't it? With that long, drawn-out, whatever you want to call that. Which, by the way, I was at um, the LA Auto Show where I got to speak to a Cadillac dealer and find out the pronunciation is Celestic. <laughs> did you say, did you say plastic? plastic? It rhymes with it. <laughs> well, it's the lyric and yeah, the Celestic. No. Yeah, I'm sticking with Celestique. I think, I think because, we should uh, make that canon. That'll be that'll yeah. be uh, that'll be great. Uh, and al- always said with a French accent, or at least a bad French accent. Mm-hmm. The Celestique. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Faraday is still in trouble, so, which is a big surprise to no one except I guess their investors, which is like, <laughs> but okay. Yeah, they're, no, it's probably not happening. So, you know, the U.S. has a really high EV adoption rate, something like 7%. I wonder how that compares with countries that that actually take this seriously. Uh, Well, Norway is sitting at 77.5% of new cars are EVs. Unreal. 77.5%. So now... When you buy a gas car, people, your neighbors come out and go, oh my gosh, you got one of those? <laughs> <laughs> they still make those, but they say with the Norwegian where, where do you language. Where do you get the stuff to put in it? Uh, is it safe to be around it on a dry day? Do you think it might explode? Well, it's full of splody juice. Splody that's, juice. That's the technical term, Bear. I don't expect you to know all of these scientific terms. I I have footnotes that I had that one on there. Yeah. I just didn't know what I was reading. Yeah. And that 77% does not include the plug-in It hybrids. is not including? Not including. Wow. Oh, yeah. 86.4% yeah. had a charging connection. Wow. So the future is here. It's in Norway. No, it's not here. It's there. What, wasn't there a, the GM commercial with Will Ferrell? Wasn't it Norway he was yelling oh, at? yeah. Yeah. But I, I think that was uh, more of a documentary. That was something he does on his in his free time anyway. They just happened to have a camera crew there. It was very serendipitous that they managed to catch it on tape. <laughs> yeah, that that is weird. Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure that that is how commercials are made now. That's how TikToks are made. They just follow people around? Well, yeah. So, batteries. Batteries? BYD plans to mass produce sodium ion batteries in Q2 of next year. Sodium ion? How does that work? Well, lithium is a salt and sodium is a salt. It works the same way. Now, normally, Mm. when we come to a miracle battery breakthrough of the week, we give it no credence. But BYD is the largest lithium-ion battery manufacturer in the world. And um, when they say something, you listen. And when they say in six, seven months, you'd be wise to take heed. Yeah, and uh, apparently they're putting these in some fairly cheap vehicles also. I don't know what the Quinn EV and Dolphin... Well, lithium um, is honestly quite cheap. But sodium is cheaper. If they can get the range out of yeah, them, I, this is a big deal. Oh my God! I didn't see the yeah. price thirteen nine eighty. Huh. Yeah. Wow, man. Yeah, their their dolphin kind of looks like a Chevy Bolt. Yes, it does. It looks um, very much like a but, Chevy Bolt. That wouldn't be like the Chinese. Now, uh, ours has a swoop on the door. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> No, ours is called Dolphin. Yours is not. It's different. That's all that they need. Um, there's just besides that being a render, there's nothing next to it for scale purposes. Um, you know, my little Johnsons could come out of that, and and it could be like, mm-hmm. you know, it could be a car that's. I don't, you don't think know. that's a standard unit of measurement, but I uh, will defer to your expertise in that profession. I suppose. Oh no. Uh, that is that is a standard. I'm 
I didn't know that you didn't know Who that. Who is this said he just saw a video on sodium batteries and that they're not good and that they're being given up on from reputable sources. I mean, if, if this hmm. is from November 22nd, if BYD is still moving forward, it's possible that um, they have overcome the obstacles. Even Jordan Giesecke from The Limiting Factor was saying they're close. They're close. So maybe they're here. But you know what? We'll find out next year. This would just be one. The real benefit to sodium batteries, apart from lessening the demand for lithium ion from other manuf- that other manufacturers would buy, is it quiets the people saying, where are you going to get the lithium? We don't need it. Just give me some table salt, baby. We'll mine it from the Himalayas if we gotta. We put a big order in with Morton Salt yeah. people, and they brought it over. <laughs> yes, the sodium iodine batteries. <laughs> Any other battery news, or is that it? Could it? work. There's always battery news. Always. There, there is now the biggest battery in Europe, in, in Cottingham. I didn't do that right, did I? Well, it sounds English, so, so it might be pronounced something ridiculous, like Cottingham, Cottingham, or just Cotting. I don't know. Uh, yeah, maybe it's called Cotting something ham. like uh, lithium bill. Uh, maybe it's baked ham, and we're just reading it wrong. I mean, they put baked beans in their breakfast. Can they be trusted? Oh, yeah, Are full English serious? breakfast. Look it up. It's a normal-looking breakfast plus beans. I don't even like baked beans in my kitchen, <laughs> let alone in my food. The site, said to be able to store so enough how, electricity how to power 300,000 homes for two hours, went online. Now, remind us, Bear, two hours is not much time. Why is this enough and a big deal? Because it's basically a backup for either when there are large loads being drawn because of winter heat or something has gone out. You don't necessarily have to power 300,000 homes. It's just a as a unit of measure, it could be tied into 100,000 homes that might last six hours. But if there was a power outage, you could also get people to cut back on everything else until something is fixed. This is just a great big backup in case something goes bad or if there's just a high demand period, also enabling them not to put out, uh, put out, turn on the peaker plants. Right. It's not designed to fully power 300,000 homes. It's designed to supplement grid power add grid stability and if there is a catastrophic failure somewhere it allows time for other sources to ramp up and fill the demand uninterrupted and at a far lower cost than like you said a peaker plant kind kind of a big deal perfect kind of a big deal nice summary so this is a great one i saw this photo somebody shared mobile electric charge vehicle triple a roadside can come out and bring you a little gas can or they can come out and give you a jump that is cute Uh, i think this picture was fairly recent right? very recent it was just from this week so did you is triple a's uh roadside ev stuff new no it's not that's been around for a while Look at this, this article from Car and Driver from six years ago. I didn't know this existed. Did you? I actually had heard of it, but I've never actually seen or read anything on it. But I heard that there is something. I heard it a long time ago, and it kind of, I knew about it, but I never looked into it. Uh, But still, I don't know how well something like this could work. Uh, obviously, it's it's not a supercharger, so you could be sitting there for, still for several hours. No, no, hours no. You're unless get... you're way out in the boonies where they do not service. They service this one in particular uh, from the previous picture, Greater Portland. It's just enough juice to prevent having to tow you. They'll give you five, ten miles of range. Well, yeah, but you need to be able. To, you need to have a charging station within those five. Well, it's Greater miles. Portland, right? Okay, what's great about mm-hmm. Portland? Greater. Uh, how do you feel about homeless? Oh. <laughs> mm. they, they've got uh, food truck culture. It's very big in Portland. 
There's yeah. food truck plazas that have, and there's a bunch of them where there'll be like 10, 20 food trucks in one spot. Well, those are, those can be kind of cool in my town. Uh, like every couple of Fridays, they have, uh, probably 15, 20 food trucks go to like right outside the library and they all park in a big circle and it's like a gathering for people to go get some food and a really expensive food right. and just, but you have like tons of choices yeah so. i have never found food trucks to be the best deal in town but oftentimes i have found it to be exceptionally good quality we have one of the trucks has lobster rolls mm-hmm. and the line is always like 30 40 people mm. deep and then you get two of them and you're out 40 bucks At- and so but people will stand there and wait on that where the next food truck has got quesadillas and people are like, yeah, I can get a quesadilla. Anyway, um, so. so in at the L.A. Auto Show, I was there for the press day, which was the day before it opened. And they had uh, they said, we will have lunch for you. And if you've ever been to a convention center and had their lunch, it is the worst thing you've ever had. So what they did instead was set up 10, 15 food trucks outside that just go up. Each one's got two options. Whatever it is, it's free. So that hmm. was one heck of a solution. And you know, that was way cheaper than having that catered in by the convention center. Oh, yeah. And and for the that comments on your side, guys, I love Portland. I'm only an hour from Portland. Uh, so, Paul, if we need to hang out, we should do that sometime. I'm I'm there fairly yeah. regularly. Uh, I'm fairly regular too, but I've never actually been in Portland. Really? So I've only. That's uh, good to hear. What was that? I'm. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a whole series of jokes I've worked up about that that I will not <laughs> not use on this channel. Why not? You know, there's a chart where the doctor uh, says, uh, "Which one? Which stool is you? Is it the firm or the?" And I say, "Which one is the expanding spray foam?" And they go. Well, You mean like just like really runny? No, no, it expands. You have to give it a couple flushes before while it's still going or you're going to over top. He goes, what does this mean? Well, you know, the the flushy thing, you know, right underneath where you put your elbows and look at the picture of Jesus. He's like, you're sitting on it backwards. I'm like, well, you know, that way I can hear it crackling. He's like, it's really expanded. So anyway, there you go. You made me do it, Bear. You made me do it. It's on this channel now. I think you just gave me a stroke. So, you know, uh, okay. Volkswagen <laughs> has uh, over-the-air updates now. That's very exciting. Yeah, but they they send it to you one bit at a time. Well, I mean, it's just a... I mean, over-the-air updates usually just happen in the background and they just go, right? Yes. Yes. Um I, I'm uncomfortable with uh, doing over-the-air updates on, like the, on my Teslas when it says your car can't be driven for 45, 50 minutes. That makes me a little nervous. It would make me more nervous if I didn't have a, another vehicle to drive, um, in case of an emergency, you know. But six to eight hours is that that is nerve-wracking because th- that could be like one of those. You know, where you get to 99% and, set, and it says it failed and it's restarting or something. You know, I'm looking at this picture and it looks photoshopped. But there's an article that comes uh, out of Germany. This is a translated one, so forgive us for the weirdness to it. That uh, seems to uh, suggest that, yeah, the first data package takes around seven and a half hours according to Volkswagen. The second package, four and a half hours. That's unacceptable, man. And you can't... Well, let me just say, that must be a mighty big package. So, uh, I think that's pretty upsetting. Apparently, they're replacing your your 12-volt battery because the car runs on the 12-volt while it's updating, and that's a long time with a lot of juice being pulled. So, so they have to replace the 12 volt battery because because it doesn't have enough capacity to keep the car alive 
during a seven and a half hour update. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is a cluster F of enormous proportions. Are you using the 2G network? No. They're, they're Edge, I think it was <laughs> I called. I think that is, is 2G. That before that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm, mm. Not good, guys. Not, not good. good. Not good. That is a cluster F for sure. And it's not like software is that hard. Software, as we all know, is very easy. Any news on... Uh, <laughs> who is this one? So, are the cars on dial-up? <laughs> well, you got to find your local bulletin board. That's the first step. It's, it's actually downloaded in little tags you tear off of flyers and feed in like punch cards. <laughs> Can't imagine that would be worse. Any right. news in software? Cruise. Today at Cruise Launch, daytime cruise. driverless rides. Service is live for cruisers and will launch to the public soon. First ride was this morning at 8.30 a.m. Is, is that uh, the actual video of the first one? Yes, that's the actual promotional video that GM recorded in order to promote it. Wow, that's how far you stop from thought. the curb. Lordy. That's <laughs> a thing. I'm excited. I'm yeah. still in favor of it. I still think it's a good thing. I still hope that they're successful. Uh, by the way, these cars do not drive on the highway. So if you're going cross town, even within the geofence, if there's a quicker route on the highway, it will not take you that way. And, and is this a geofence uh, where you can only take it within Absolutely. a certain area? Very much so. Yeah, they just wave goodbye at the yeah. empty car. Yeah, well... I dropped them off 10, 10 feet, feet from, the, from curb. the curb. Close enough that you're going to get run over by a bicycle. Yeah. But that's all yeah. right, I guess. Do you know Waymo is uh, also pushing forward? More self-driving cars are riding into SF. So they will have more vehicles without uh, safety pilots. And uh, yeah, uh, Cruise, Cruise started charging for rides in June, did they? I think the daytime drives oh. for crews are still uh, not allowed to be monetized, but I may be wrong on that. Is it is it easier at night, or is it just that there's less traffic? I think it's that there's less obstacles and less chaos. Okay, fair enough. And they can see just fine in the dark. Um, that, well, that's true, because they're not right. using vision. <laughs> but, again... I wish them all the best. I hope this works. I hope both of these companies succeed. I hope all of us can enjoy robo taxis in the not too distant future. And you know, after after <clears throat> you notice that VW and Ford got out of their Argo AI, uh, and George Hotz left Comma AI, which he founded, and both of those happened right on the heels of uh, of uh, AI Day Two. And I think a lot of companies looked at the approach Tesla was taking to interpreting the world, saw how deep it was, how thorough it was, how sophisticated it was, and how it still doesn't work, and said, if that approach, which we can't copy, can't crack it, we don't stand a chance in hell. Yeah, so do you, do you think it's, it's not solvable? Everything's impossible until it isn't. Every, you True. know, uh, text to speech was impossible until it wasn't. And then everyone cracked it. Uh, um, there, yeah, it still, it still is, by the there way. There is a, a generational jump that needs to take. Right. And when text to speech goes wrong, you don't kill anyone. At least I don't. I can't no. speak for you, Bear. I apologize for jumping to conclusions. Yeah, I, I've got a screenshot that I took like 10 years ago or was longer than that. And I was uh, doing text to speech to my boss. And I, it was just a, some innocuous message about uh, something like maybe I'm running a little late. And it literally turned into, uh, I'm going to effing kill you and I hate you. All on its own. So it was like, screenshot, screenshot, because I didn't say that. But 
yeah, that it's definitely progressed because I haven't threatened anybody lately with it. That is nice. I what I love is when you're using Google's feature, and you can see that it got it right the first time, and then it searches something else, and you're like, oh, you had it, man, you had it. Well, you're supposed to give it an attaboy right, as you're going right. along. I've had that too, where I, <laughs> where I keep talking and it just keeps recording it. Just I'm gonna, I'm gonna search. I'm gonna search this whole thing. So that's nice. So now that we know how difficult it is, uh, what's Stellantis's approach? Uh, there's uh, their approach uh, the, to just buy someone who, who might have been oh, working on it. Oh, a brand new it. startup with no track record. That will surely give them the huge advantage they've been looking forward to. The AI startup is based in Budapest, with offices in Germany, U.S., and Japan. <sighs> they've got to have something in their technology that they thought was worth uh, worth it. There's, you don't just grab any one of them and say, all right, well, we got a starting point. Have you seen the new Dodge Neon they released a few years ago? They thought that was a gem. You didn't like no. that? I thought the neon no, was... No, I was... I love that no. in the commercials they showed sketches of it, but not the car. I was like, oh, this is going to be a hot, hot turd. Yeah. The automaker estimated it could generate $20 billion in extra revenue by 2030. I mean, sure. Sure. Why not? I could, too. I yeah. could, too, by the way. Yeah, if it works, it could generate money. That's how that works. <laughs> oh, and don't forget the level three driving, self-driving will be in some Stellantis vehicles by 2024. Yeah. Developing auto drive that would offer level two, two plus, and three autonomous driving capabilities through over-the-air updates. <sighs> and, and, and where's Tesla at? What, two. What level are they at? Two. I mean, it's in five. It, five is the ultimate five goal, is, right? There's not even a wheel in the car. Uh, right. Yeah. Right. That's the ultimate goal. And three is okay. um, you're no longer in charge. If it crashes, it's its fault. Which is what Mercedes offers on the highway at speeds under 35 miles an hour, uh, in very limited con circumstances. Yes. We. we uh, I think the crosswinds were down to like seven miles per hour, <laughs> cannot be cloudy, and you have to have an apple. A, <laughs> a physical. A, the apple, the it's, fruit. It's, it's how it knows you're staying apple attentive. It's in, the green M&Ms of Mercedes level yes. three. Exactly. Yeah. So there's a there's a couple of weird criteria in there, but, you know, hey, it works. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And, uh, of course... Uh, before the show, I went ahead and asked JJ what we're missing, what we're misunderstanding. And uh, we almost didn't get to this because in the chat he said he was going to unsubscribe because my joke was just too too good. And it made him laugh so hard. He, <laughs> he feared for his well-being. And then he said he, he decided against unsubscribing after all. Nicola partners with yeah, wow. Charge Point to sell an uh, entire portfolio of charging solutions to fleets. Who? Charge Pois. I think it's a French company. What are you trying to say? Trying to say? Uh, well, how do you pronounce it? Are you trying to say, trying to say a charge point? Uh, you point? Americans with your accents. <laughs> I am just relieved it's not Electrify America. Because Electrify America yeah. does not have an approach that works as we've discovered. Yes, and what Brian is referring to is that each charging station is uh, built not from the same materials, but by random things that they hope will fit together. They they are given basically a schematic and saying, make something that does this. Uh, if you need a inverter or a converter that goes from this level to this, use whatever one you can find. Uh, just use the right gauge wiring. So all the parts in it are all going to be different. Because they're all made by individual people, not on a production yeah, line. Yeah, so you might have so, five or ten different inverters designed to do the same thing. Five or ten different, you know, 
uh, PCI, you know, or, you know, the, the boards. And the problem is, yeah, they're supposed to work together. But when you come to start chasing down gremlins, it doesn't work. A story that Jeff was sharing with me the other day was about when Ford was testing the Electrify America network for the Mach-E. They found that certain chargers just wouldn't work with it. And it was because there was a specific component in that machine that was a problem. And so charge, so Ford went to Electrify America and said, give us a map of the locations that have that component. And they said, we can't. We don't know what's in our machines. Because the whole reason they built it was out of compliance from Dieselgate. And their plan was to just do the bare bones minimum, sell it off. And right now we're at the sell it off point because they're spending so much money on publicity and Jack Beanstalk on actually keeping the network running. Yeah, and I will vouch for that. Um, it, it's a rare time that I can go to an EA charger and not have some sort of issue with charging. Um, yeah, even if everything I, works great, the, 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 the cables are like a, a, a stiff fire hose trying to get them over to your car. They're, they're heavy and awkward, and ju just that part alone makes it not worth it to me. But then the interface and being denied payment when you have your payments denied because you have but you have free charging, you know, just everything from that. And then when you finally get it, it goes nope, can't work. Starts works for a minute, fails. It's just endless. So I, I accumulated Fine. some experience with the Tesla supercharger network over the road trip, and discovered uh, that you just plug it in and walk away, and that's it. Plug it in, light turns green, and away you go. When you pull up, the stall works. All the stalls we saw worked. And for fun fun fact, okay. I also saw a hydrogen station, which had uh, I almost was able to uh, catch the driver before they left, but I didn't. But I caught the machine, and it was frosty. Those, you, if you're not careful with that hose, you will absolutely get frostbite and suffer harm. And then the, all the compressors and whatnot kick up because it has a refractory period uh, after after someone gets their hydrogen after which you have to wait for it to uh, get ready for the next person. And it was a massive, massive stack of equipment behind a very short fence, and it had one pump. <clears throat> and I tried wow. to do commentary, but they were playing Take On Me over the, over the gas station Muzak, <laughs> so I couldn't, I couldn't use the Take audio. On it. It's a great song. Me. I just don't feel like paying for it. Yeah, I just sung it. We're both going to get hit with a copyright violation. Yeah, yeah. I just, just that, just the hat. That's why uh, there was an episode of 30 Rock where uh, Tracy was afraid that somebody might record the terrible things he was saying. So he would say them to the town, to the tune of Uptown Girl <laughs> so that they'd be <laughs> taken down. Yeah, just play, uh, yeah, just play Disney music and you'll, the mouse will be on your butt in no time. <laughs> JJ, I saw just one hydrogen car uh, there at the station in California. If Jeff is still in here, he can tell us where we were. He probably remembers. Uh, and it was fueling. It had fueled up. Uh, it was fueling when we got there. And by the time we noticed what it was, um, we were out of time because I was recording a segment as well. Uh -huh. Jeff is trying to remember. And Jeff can probably also remember which, uh, which vehicle it was, but I assume it was the Mirai. Um, we, mm. oh yeah, that probably yeah, a good assumption. We did assumption. see a Mirai also um, in the parking garage at the Peterson Auto Museum in camo. I th wasn't that a Mirai? I think it was. Jeff will Jeff will correct me. How, if it was in camo, how'd you even see so it? So the point is on the Nikola Charger uh, partnership is great. They're going to have their customers know where they need where they need juice. And if ChargePoint has a product that works, and I don't see a reason to think it wouldn't, they can make for a turnkey solution. Yes, and Nikola has a mobile charging trailer, uh, but that's not really the long-term way to go because it can probably run by a generator um, or other options. But they do need some permanent uh, charging stations, and that is what... Uh, the CFO, Kim Brady, has said is one of the holdups on getting a lot of trucks delivered 
because they can get the trucks delivered, but let's say TTSI gets 100 trucks, they don't have the infrastructure set up to charge them. So this is something that they need, and they really need it faster. They need it sooner, and hopefully this isn't too late, but they need to get these charging stations up and ready and installed for these companies. Um, but going back to the chats for a minute, it looks like I've got a couple of wannabe terrorists in my chat talking about getting a group together to storm the Nikola headquarters. And I'm disavowing them right now. Not a good idea. I don't think that it will work out. I did want to address this. Uh, John's touchpad pointed out, said, Brian, look at the very bottom of the BYD story, which I just did which is after late posts, latest report was published, uh, Kalian cited BYD's response that the news was untrue, but provided no further details. So perhaps the sodium batteries are not coming in Q2. Yeah. And uh, Jeff pointed out that the nozzle uh, of the hydrogen pump was icy and they put up a, a rubber sheath, a plastic sheath over it to protect you, but it was frayed and incomplete and... There was a big chunk about this big on it where there was no cover at all. And yeah, so that's magical. Magical. I think for for light passenger vehicles, this is not good. <laughs> yeah, and um, I think JJ is uh, trying to pretend to be a moderator. He threw a wrench into his... Oh, he forgot which uh, chat he was on. See, he's jealous that he's not a moderator. Moderators get a little wrench, so he puts wrenches on his comments on my <laughs> side just to annoy the moderators, but I, I I, don't mind. I think it's harmless and fun. Yeah, he's, he's doing that on my side too, but he did say besides his uh, impersonation, now get you banned on Twitter these days, mm -hmm. by the way, uh, TTSI just installed two more at the Port of LA. I'm assuming he means charging stations. Nice. So. Um, by the way, I impersonation doesn't. Uh, only some impersonation does. I know Mary Bear has been impersonating a leader, and she hasn't been banned. Ah, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I. Well, well, you know they you did know ban Kathy Griffin for impersonating a comedian. Uh, who is? Yeah. It, uh, say who is this pointed out? Ah, so the nozzle condom was broken. Yes, but just the tip. Oh wow. <laughs> this is uh, another couple of weeks of this, and we're just going to have a totally X-rated EV show. If anything, I think it would sell more. A, I think it would. This is going to turn into uh, adults-only EV talk because everything is going to be related to something yeah. else. Yeah, well, you know what? It is 5 o'clock, which means I am due to thank my patrons, who are the second best in the world, according to Bear, who get early access, bonus content, right. all that good stuff. All right, and for me, I got to thank my patrons because they are the best, as Brian just confirmed, and I thank you and I appreciate you, you guys for the support that you give us. Uh, we were we're going to be working on uh, videos tomorrow for Nicola and Lucid, so um, hopefully we'll get that out and we won't be uh, running into any danger zone. Thanks, and we hope to see you again tomorrow. We'll probably do, be doing the live stream of the Nicola site, and I want to thank everyone, including Brian, for being here, because Brian, you demand, and uh, not that we mentioned this at all, but Brian bailed my butt out today for um, not being on time. And I want to thank him for his extra efforts that he put in today. So and he keeps you, uh, apologizing, but it was really no big deal at all. It, uh, you know, I will. So anyway, I've got my Friday live stream coming up. It'll probably be about the L.A. Auto Show, but I don't know for sure. Probably some news going to break between now and then. But I, all this week and probably well into next week, I'm going to have all kinds of stuff about my trip, the L.A. Auto Show, the exhibits at the Peterson Museum where I saw the Cybertruck and the most dangerous Tesla ever made, uh, the Cyberquad Junior. <laughs> yeah. Still gonna, thinking about trying to get my refund on the Cybertruck. Oh, what you kids. do is um, you I... just send, you mail them the module and then you put it up on display. The yeah, module? the control module. Oh, yeah, you can't. You sold it already. I sold it, yeah. I sold it, yeah, but they 
keep telling me I can get my money back. Um, I, on a side note, uh, JJ said uh, BBW charging uh, in reference to our getting raunch here. Um, I had a puppy that was very big. She was very dark. Um, and she was female, so we actually called her BBW. Oh. And if you don't know what, don't know what that's. Well, I'm sure that doesn't have a second um, meaning, so that's good. Yeah. So, yeah, that was our BBW, mm. and uh, this, she, uh, she was very sweet. But we're we're not doing BBW charging. No. Just to, to keep it honest. No, I'm uh, <laughs> gonna reserve gonna, all twenty jokes that just came into my head. Because we've uh, already gone. Yeah, uh, but I do identify uh, off color. BBW. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Bear, okay. for your time. And uh, I'll see you all guys later. All right, thanks, everyone. All right, thanks, everyone. Even, even JJ. <laughs>